It's no secret King Charles III loves Italian food and these dried wild mushrooms make the perfect risotto. Winston? Winston? Come back with that leg of lamb. I love the fall, autumn, the slow braises, stews, short ribs, lamb shanks bubbling away on the stove. That smell when you walk through the door from the cold air outside. And wild mushrooms in season, the height of the season. I like to use wild mushrooms all throughout the year, but to do that, it means dehydrating them, drying them. And that's what I'm gonna to do today. In my Eating Royally kitchen here in Dallas, Texas, I use this Paris Rhone dehydrator. Love this machine. It circulates the air and has so many racks in there uh, that you can do so much on it at once. I set my temperature for the wild mushrooms to 131 for six hours. Sometimes they're done in four, check them after four, uh, but it's usually about six hours. They need to be able to snap. So take out a rack and then, look, these gorgeous chanterelles. And then just slice your mushrooms and lay them so they're not touching onto the rack. And then into the dehydrator. You can even use regular field mushrooms as well. And I know, why would you, why would you want to dry them out? But knowing that you've always got some on standby in a jar that you can just take and rehydrate and use. I think it's a great idea. The black trumpet mushrooms need no cutting at all. You can just lay those out. And the same for the wood ears. Just lay them out. Dehydrating has been around for over a hundred years and it's the perfect way to dry your food out and make it last so much longer. You just rehydrate it if you want to, especially the mushrooms, but it's perfect for making jerky and all the sliced fruit snacks, bananas and berries. Um, it, and, and vegetables too. The Paris Rhone dehydrator is so quiet that it just sits there in the background humming away. Which is good really because it's going to be in there for six hours. <sighs> Time to make a cup of tea. Still an hour to go. That's the impatience in me. They've changed in colour though, and texture too. And they actually smell good. They smell earthy and woody. Winston says that we should give away one of these Paris Rhone dehydrators. Okay, we will. If you click on the link below to my Instagram page, we'll give one away on there. See if you can be the lucky winner. 55 minutes. I can't wait. That's six hours. I can't tell you how excited I am. Look how they've changed in texture and dried too. If they're still squishy, you need to put them in for another hour. But these ones just snap. And that means we got all of that air out of them, all of that moisture out of them. They're changing color slightly, but the flavor's still there. those trumpets I'm putting them into a bowl first because we need them to cool completely before we put them in an airtight container oh look at those wood ears look at those so crispy now Mmm, it's 
store them in an airtight container once they're cold, put them on the shelf. They can sit there for a year if you need, but use them when you're making something like a risotto. And that's what I'm gonna do next. Risotto is a gorgeous Italian rice dish that uses arborio rice, which is short grain rice. You can see it's different to sort of the, you know, the long grain jasmines and basmatis. And the short grain rice is what we actually use in the UK to make something called rice pudding. <sighs> That's another video. Sprinkle the rice into a pan with some olive oil and stir. And you stir it just until you get a little sort of nutty smell uh, as the rice starts to scorch. Then into that, I'm going to add some vegetable broth or chicken broth. But only just enough to cover it. And I'm going to let that simmer for a little while. It takes roughly about 20 minutes to make the perfect risotto. And what I did just before is I took some of my dehydrated mushrooms and rehydrated them because I wanted to show you what they look like. I chopped them up and I covered them in hot water and that rehydrates them. Look, they're all soft and squidgy again. But look in there also, that gorgeous brown liquid that, that comes out into uh, the mushrooms, comes out and it's just beautiful and will give the most amazing flavor to my risotto. You've got to be patient with this. As I said, it takes about 20 minutes. And so you keep giving it a stir and the liquid starts reducing and evaporating and the rice starts opening up. We can't add all the liquid at once because we want to try and keep a sort of syrupy um, texture around the rice, the, the, the liquid, but we also want a nuttiness uh, to the risotto. So be patient. After about 10 minutes of cooking the rice and adding a little broth at a time, I can now add the liquid from the mushrooms. Fifteen minutes in and it's starting to get really syrupy, the liquid around the rice. And the rice is just nutty and just cooked. Now is the time to add my wild mushrooms. It's cooked perfect now. It smells amazing. It's really syrupy. The rice is still nutty. And now I'm going to add a little Parmesan cheese. I remember going wild mushroom foraging with the Prince of Wales and Antonio Carlucci at Balmoral Castle. And we came back with so many. And we would actually sauté them off and freeze them. But they only lasted about three months. Using the dehydrator, you can keep them like this for a year. That's the way to go. Smells amazing. And now for the plating. You can serve this as a side dish, as an entree. You can put lamb on the top or chicken or fish, but just as a little appetizer. A sprinkle of Parmesan. A few chives and a little drizzle of truffle oil. Doesn't that look amazing? Thanks for watching the video. If you haven't subscribed already, click on the subscribe, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Don't forget to click on the link below to my Instagram account where you can win a Paris Rhone dehydrator that Winston's giving away. Aren't you, Winston? Yes. See you again soon.